and to welcome you all to um, this evening's first series, so the first in our series of Progression Pathways webinars. My name is Beth Midwinter and I work as an Outreach Hub Assistant for Study Hire, um, one of the institutions being uh, involved in the running of this evening. We've also got Shamsa tonight who's working away in the background doing our tech support and uh, Lucy who um, works with another outreach team joining us later on for the Q&A session. Um, we're going to be welcoming tonight's student ambassadors from lots of our institution uh, partnerships. Unfortunately, the Royal Agricultural College couldn't join us this evening, but we do have ambassadors from Oxford Brookes University, Reading, Buckinghamshire New University, Abingdon and Whitney College and Milton Keynes. So we'll slowly get through everybody and enjoy listening to their presentations. Um, we're going to be covering the different types and levels of study the key benefits of entering higher education and the various opportunities available at higher education providers. Before we get started, we just wanted to ask how many of you are actually familiar with the HEIs we're going to listen to this evening and have and we have with us today. And we wonder if you could just answer um, a couple of questions which we're going to pop into the polls for you. Um, just to give us a bit of um, feedback this evening and to help us um, inform future webinars. So I think those polls are going to come up shortly on your screen. I'll leave those for you to answer for a few minutes. That's lovely. And I think we, there we go. We've got the results in front there. Unfortunately, one of mine is hidden from my pop up menu. So I can see the vast majority actually have heard of Reading and then Brooks and then Buckinghamshire, which is great. Um, and hopefully by the end of the evening's presentation, you'll know a little bit more about all of those and the others involved tonight. So thank you for answering those. Just like to let you know that um, you'll find the PDF doc documents that are attached to tonight's presentation in the materials tab, which you should be able to spot there. If for any reason you can't access those, please do let us know in the chat box um, and we can then uh, sort those out for you. Here's the second of our polls. And of the colleges, it's Milton Keynes, which is out there in front with Abingdon and Whitney. Just a few of you have heard about Abingdon and Whitney. So lovely. Again, hopefully we can enlighten you all a little bit more later. As I just mentioned, there are some PDF documents associated with tonight's presentations. Um, gives you a brief description and website links, as well as downloadable worksheets for you to make notes on during the session if you find that useful. You can, as I mentioned, the chat box, type any questions in you have throughout the session and we will try and pick those up as we go through and answer those um, live during the question and answer session at the end. We do hope you enjoy this evening's event and I'd like to start off now by handing you over to Amber from Brooks University, who's going to give us our first presentation. Thank you, Amber. Sorry, guys. Amber is muted, and I think she might be with us now. Are you there, Amber? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well done, Amber. <laughs> Hello. Um, my name's Amber. I'm a first-year adult nursing student at Oxford Brookes University on the um, Marsden campus. Um, Oxford Brookes is a campus-based university in the heart of Oxford. 
Next slide, please. So at university, your learning environment is likely to be a lot different at what, um, to what you're used to at school or college. Um, we tend to use the standard format of lectures and seminars, which are likely to be larger classes that you might find at school or college. Um, for the majority of courses, you will also be expected to complete a significant amount of independent study. I personally chose to do a foundation year um, before starting my bachelor's in um, humanities to help further my education. Um, as well as this, it also helped me with the step from BTEC to university as the writing styles and the workload was a lot different. Um, at university, you will have a lot more freedom. You have time to manage your work a lot more. However, you do have um, more creative freedom as well in the work you do. And you don't get um, pressured as much from lecturers to do it. It's very independent. Um, a university timetable is also very different to school. It can vary. A normal uh, week for me, I would be in university two or three times a week with one hour lectures and one hour sem seminars. And the rest of the week I have independent study to catch up on any work or assignments I need to do. As a nursing student, I also have the opportunity to use the practical study equipment, which includes a face hospital wards um, with mannequins who can be made to have actual illnesses. So we can put that into practice before we actually go into a hospital. Next slide, please. Um, with a campus-based university, you will have a lot of useful services that are easily accessible in one place. At Oxford Brooks, on the main campus, we have a 24-hour library access. In addition to this, we have four campuses which all have large study and social spaces. Um, as well as the social areas on campus, we also have a large amount of student accommodation, which all have great social areas. I've been in the hall for two years now, which has been a great social environment, as well as a good study area. I personally really enjoy being in halls because I feel like everybody's in the same boat as you, so um, you settle in very quickly and it's very easy to meet new people. We are also provided with academic advisors who are subject specific and offer help, whether it is subject related or not, they're useful to guide you to any resources that you may need. Next slide please. Um, higher education also offers a lot of opportunities to engage in a range of activities as well as ways of enhancing your qualification. Oxford Brooks offers a range of societies from the Nursing Society to the Harry Potter Society. Um, societies are a really great way of meeting people that have the same interest as you as, um, outside of your course. In addition to this, Oxford Brooks have a large number of sports such as um, rugby and ultimate frisbee. This is a great opportunity to meet others socially but can also be a place where you can obtain scholarships um, which will help you to further your education more. There's also the opportunity to study abroad. As a nursing student, I have the opportunity to travel to America for a year and study over there. Um, but we also have placements in the UK. In two weeks time, I'll be going on my first placement in Oxford, um, which is in the Stroke Rehabilitation Unit, and I'll have six of them. Um, and the main reason I wanted to do this is because every hospital in Oxford is a teaching hospital. So if you're a healthcare student, um, that's very beneficial because you'll have um, teachers all around you. Next slide, please. Um, and I think that students should consider higher education because it will further develop their skills, not only in education, but socially as well. Um, and on the side here, we have our QR code to our UniBuddy platform where you can chat to a current student on your chosen course. Thank you. That was great, Amber. Thanks very much for that. I had to try and find my unmute button. This is all new, I tell you. I'm going to get it wrong all the way. That was lovely. Lots of information there. And next um, the talk is from Lania, who's from Reading University. Thanks, Lania. Hi. Hi there. So, hi, I'm Lania. I am from Reading University and I'm studying MSI in speech and language therapy and I'm in my fourth and final year. Next slide, please. So at Reading University, we have um, degree focus. So we have um, foundation years, placement years, and my course, which is an integrated master's. We have 63 subject areas and hundreds of courses, so a lot to choose from. And some of the unique courses are speech and language therapy, wildlife conservation, food and nutritional sciences, and meteorology and climate. And we're most well known for our sciences, our languages, arts, humanities, and business. Um, 
So like Amber said, we have um, lectures and seminars, um, pretty much the same, but we also have workshops, um, lab work, so field work specifically that may be like wildlife conservation where you actually go into nature and you do that kind of field work. Um, and we also have experimental work, which a lot of the science based courses do. In my degree specifically, we have what's called preparation clinic. So this picture that you can see on the right hand side. Um, so what happens is we have two rooms that are connected to each other and we have a piece of one way glass in the middle and we can actually observe therapists giving therapy to clients. Really, really exciting, um, a great unique part of our course. Um, we also have placements. So these are a lot of um, medical based and science based, we have placements. But um, for me, um, I have placement every term of every year of my degree. Um, and like Amber said as well, we do have a lot of independent study, but you are also supported in this. So next slide, please. So here are our support services. Um, the bottom right here is our newly refurbished library. Um, it's open 24 hours um, term time. We have click and collect services, a huge online database so you don't actually need the physical book. And we have a huge range of study spaces. So we have group study, um, quiet study, silent study, um, all different types. You will also have a support center for each of your degrees. Um, and they're there to help you um, through your degree and help you with anything academically um, that you may need. Um, and we also have um, Reading University Students Union, RUSU, um, and they have their own, um, so it's run by students for students, and they also have their own impartial advice service. Um, we have clinical tutors, so this is very important if you're going on placement. Um, we are actually working with clients in real life, so these are to help you through your placement. We have module conveners, so these will be the people in charge of your, your lesson, so your, your module in that area. You will also be given a personal tutor at the beginning of the year, um, and they can meet with you every term or if you've got any other issues. Um, another services that we have, we have quite a lot of services to support you, is the specialist and academic mentors. So academic will help you all course related and specialist is more um, your social, your life, uh, mental health, that kind of thing. Um, also have disability advisory service and counselling and wellbeing, and um, they're great services. And for accommodation, we have welfare reps, so they'll keep an eye on your welfare. And we have the Halls Hotline, which is open 24 hours a day. So if your radiator leaks or you get a burst pipe or something, they're there available for you all the time. And security is available for all of the accommodation as well as the whole of the campus 24 hours as well. So next slide, please. So University Life. So we actually have three campuses. Our main campus where most of our courses are is set in 130 hectares of parkland. It's absolutely beautiful. We also have another campus which is home to the Institute of Education and School of Architecture. And our third campus is the Business School for Master's Programmes and Corporate Learning. So University does provide you with a lot of opportunities. We have over 150 societies and over 50 sports clubs. We have a fruit and veg market every week, um, an international food market as well, absolutely delicious. And because we are campus based, we have shops, cafes, restaurants and bars. And as Amber said, we also have the study abroad programme. And if like me, you want to earn a little bit of extra money, we also have campus jobs, which is what I'm doing today. So next slide, please. So thank you for listening and here are a few links to get you excited about higher education and to know a bit more about the University of Reading. So thank you and good luck guys. Thank you, Lania. You did pack a lot in there and that was very, very good. So well done for getting through all of that. Lots of information. So without any ado, I'm going to move straight on to Juliet next, please, who is from Buckinghamshire New University. Hi, so my name is Julia and I come from Buckinghamshire New University. I study basically what I call Netflix crime series as a degree, so criminological psychology, and I'm in my third and final year. So next slide if that's okay. Fantastic, so Hibercom, the Hibercom campus itself is very small, Bucks itself is small with only about 10,000 students um, approximately at the moment. You'll be on one of the three campuses which I will talk about. Um, this, 
you will have small classes during your lectures with around 40 to 50 40 to 50 in the class itself and then when it comes to your seminars less than 20 as being a small university it has its perks so you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your lecturers and actually they know who you are and what you want to do in the future and therefore can help um, we have facilities for each course so to just highlight a few we have a wonderful 24 7 library with five floors in this because we're a very big aviation university we have our own flight simulator um, and we also have Brooker Airfield very close by, uh, which you can get a taxi for five pounds to go see. Uh, alongside, we I do psychology, so we have a psychology lab with a VR set. We have biopacks, and we have uh, so the biopacks help us to measure heart rates. Um, and then we also have an observation suite where we can look and do case studies on like mental health, on crime, drugs, anything along those lines. Um, and other courses, we have uh, lots of different drama studios as well as one of our main uh, for performing arts. Uh, next slide, if that's OK. So I talked about our three campuses. Our main one is High Wycombe, where you'll most likely be if you can join university. Um, Ellsbury and Uxbridge are mainly used for nursing and for uh, business and law and compu uh, computing. Um, so. Our Ellsbury is our newest campus, um, but High Wycombe is our main. And you can get between these three via our uh, campus bus link or via the um, tube stations or High Wycombe train station. So we're all very closely linked to each other. Um, and within that, our accommodation is mainly in High Wycombe with uh, three halls, Brook Street, Windsor and the Hewenden Village. Um, again, all very close in town. Um, and able to access the, uh, the university. Um, can I go to the next slide? So finally, with our opportunities at Bucks. So we have a, offer a lot of placements um, during our term. So our sports students um, tend to do around 300 hour placements each uh, year. And this helps them to become more employable and get a better job as well as have experience in the industry. Um, I myself have had the opportunity to work with the Ministry of Defence. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, that didn't go through, but it was a nice dream. Um, you also get to take part in lots of research that's done by your lecturers. Uh, go to conferences. As we're very close to London, um, we get to go to trips into London or around the country, uh, which is really good for helping uh, with what you see in your course and bring it to life. Uh, we get lots of guest speakers in, um, like I said, we're close to London and our student union is the part of the top three in the country. We offer a lot of free, um, we offer a lot of free different uh, opportunities such as first aid courses, joining societies and you get your money back after a while. So it's a really good university to go to. And final slide. So thank you for listening. Um, I've linked the chat platform here, which is what we use to chat to uh, different people and you can chat to any of our students. Um, so thank you. That's lovely. Thank you, Julia. Lots of information again. It's um, amazing what's on offer at all of these different institutions. That's brilliant. So we're now going to move over to Abingdon and Whitney College. And that's Lois, please, if you're ready. Oh, yeah, I am. Um... So my name's Lois. I am here from Abingdon and Whitney College. Um, I know a lot of the others are actually still studying, but I have actually finished. So I have finished last year. So my final year was unfortunately during the whole COVID situation. But yeah, I'm here from Abingdon and Whitney College. Um, we'll move on to your next slide, please. Um, so different types and level of study. Um, so they do loads of different levels at Abingdon and Whitney. So you can go in from school leaver. So even if you leave after GCSEs, you can go in and do a BTEC or you can go and do your A levels there. Uh, undergraduate and professional, I know part time and evening, but we don't need that. And um, apprenticeship. So I know most about apprenticeships as I did my apprenticeship through Oxford Brooks, but at Abingdon and Whitney College. Um, so. I know that we have Avenue and Whitney 
So they're both two separate campuses. So there's one in Whitney, one in Abingdon. There is also one just outside Whitney. So it's a common lease campus. So if you're studying uh, animals or equine or even grooming, which I know you can study, um, you'll be studying at the common lease campus. Um, so there's loads of different campuses. Um, I'd say Abingdon and Whitney is set up a lot more like a school. So uh, whilst it's not a school, it's slightly different to university. Um, there's different sort of hours and it's more one to one contact and smaller classes, which I personally really liked. Um, so if I move on to next slide, please. So different support services and facilities at Abingdon. So I didn't use all of these. Um, the library, like I say, as, was, as it was set up more similarly to a school, the library is only open between sort of Avenue and Whitney's opening hours. Uh, but for us, we were lucky enough as we would go through Oxford Brooks, we could go to the Oxford Brooks Library as well. Um, so there's plenty of different sort of support services that you can use. Um, I know personally the learning support side of things, uh, one of my really good friends on the course was actually using learning support. Um, they were always there to help. Uh, they set up one-to-one -one sessions, they'll discuss your work with you, really, really help you. Um, Owen and Whitney offers so many different services, so even career guidance, you know, our lecturers, and there is even in the sports uh, student services, you can go and talk to them about career guidance, but it's so one-to-one -one that you, you've always got someone to talk to about sort of different paths. Uh, English and math support, if you need to do redo English and maths, they can help you do that before you do or sign up to a degree or an apprenticeship. Um, lots around equality, diversity, inclusion, um, they're really big on their safeguarding and sort of prevent uh, special education needs and disabilities, uh, really heavy on that as well. They are really good for support. Um, and I'll just pick up on a couple of extras. I know, like I said before, one-to-one -one support from lecturers was the main thing for me it was really really helpful and they were always there and I only did one day a week so it was quite hard to get all that contact time um so even on email they just sort of come straight back to you they were always really really helpful um and other facilities as I say it's sort of a smaller smaller school sort of campus um and we did have a higher education building um but they do have a Costa Coffee and a canteen. So whilst we're not, it wasn't huge, they, they didn't have that and the Costa was great. So um, yeah, there's a there's a link at the bottom as well to student services if, if anyone needs that. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so opportunities and extracurricular. Like I say, I only studied one day a week, so my experience of it is slightly different. Um, but I do know that, you know, they, they like to get involved in a lot of charity work. Um, clubs and interest, they've set up lunchtime clubs for people to attend. I think there was a, a gaming club, all sorts of things. Um, Freshers' Fair, we actually went to the books one, but they do set up every now and again a Freshers' Fair. Uh, the Green Team, that was all about looking after the environment and sustainability. I know Owen and Whitney are quite heavy on that. Um, lots of sports and activities. Uh, students of the Year awards, so they were really great, sort of honour students with different awards every year. Um, and they also do staff awards as well. Um, student voice in particular, we had a set of student reps uh, that we would uh, vote for and they would be our voice uh, for the college. So the college do really listen to your thoughts and your feelings and, and how, how you're getting on and how you think it might be better um, every single year. Um, and they visit revisit that every term. I know there's lots of different trips and visits. I know there's one that potentially goes to Disneyland, but don't quote me on that. Um, and lots and lots of work experience. And there are so many lecturers and so many teachers and tutors there that have different links to places. And they they really do offer the best work experience um, for, for people. Um, okay, next slide. Shall I say it again? Next slide, please. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I seem to have erased through that, but I'm hoping I'm still in my time limit. Um, um, the um, sorry, just had a pair on walking. Um, so thank you for listening. 
Um, why you should consider higher education for me is definitely uh, the experience or the value that you'll get. And particularly from my point of view, for, from an apprenticeship, um, you definitely get the value out of working and studying at the same time. Um, and I put a little link in the bottom um, for you all if you want to have a look at the Avenue and Whitney website. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, Lois. So much there to offer. Um, it's fantastic to hear all of that. And for our final presentation, we are going to Josh um, from Milton Keynes College. So if you're ready, Josh. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Josh from Milton Keynes College. Uh, it's an institute of technology. Uh, so it focuses mainly on computing courses, uh, higher education of like varying levels. I'm studying games and animation in first year doing something I really, really want to do. Uh, next slide, please. Sorry, next slide, please. Sorry, Josh, I'm not in control of slides there. I can't help you. <laughs> yeah, no problem, I'm sure. Okay, Thank there we go, perfect. Uh, yeah, so. A uh, little bit of background on me, what I studied at A-level. Uh, so I've been through kind of both sides of this. I went to university straight out of uh, sixth form after I finished my A-levels. Studied astrophysics and maths at Keele University. Uh, it wasn't for me, I'll say university, and that's kind of the point I want to make with this whole thing is that everyone is different and there are key differences that I, I've seen from both sides of these kind of higher education uh, differences between colleges, universities, anything else. Uh, so. I uh, uh, dropped out of, college, uh, of university. It wasn't for me, and I definitely made the right decision with that. I went into work, uh, did retail for a few years, and when COVID hit, I kind of decided that I wanted to go back into education, do something I really, really wanted to do. And that's where I came to games and animation, which is something I'm really interested in. And honestly, the, the subject matter and the way it's taught is better for me. And I kind of found it in a in a roundabout route from uh, how most people might find their courses, but uh, it's it's definitely right, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, when you find it in uh, in your timeline, and that's fine. Uh, yep, uh, next slide, please. So the main thing is the like examination process. I would say is is a very big difference. Uh, college courses, or at least in my case, this one uh, is much more kind of uh, coursework driven, you have uh, more time to complete. Uh, whereas I found university is very like kind of high pressure environment where you have to do examinations. People are usually quite accustomed to that, having to do them at uh, school, sixth form, whatever. And of course, a lot of people have no problem with that. And I know many, many people, most of my friends went through university all the way through and they really enjoyed it. They uh, had no problems. Of course, there's some parts of university that are great and I'm uh, Glad I didn't miss out on that. I went to, you know, you have the madness of freshers week or uh, just student life in general, whatever you're going through. And it's really fun. You get to meet a load of new people. You get to live in halls or on campus, wherever you're living with people your own age and with similar interests, which is always great. And that's a part of university. I think it's really important that, uh, you know, not necessarily just the qualification that you're getting out of it, you're getting a lot of life experiences, like socially and uh, grow, that grow you and uh, develop you as a person. They're really important. You get that kind of independence. It's a good stage of independence that's kind of in between being at home where you're at school and, and just going into the world. It's a really nice stepping stone to go through. Uh, and you know, some people like to stay at home when they go to university or college, whatever. Some people like to move. I know people who have said that they wanted to uh, move literally far away. They chose universities based because they didn't want to go somewhere that was too close to home. And that's fine for some people, you know, everyone is different, but it, the path is different for different people. It really depends what suits you and what you find manageable. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so this is me, this is my uh, course and my uh, institute. I'd say just don't feel pressured to do something that you don't want to do because it's for you at the end of the day. Study something you enjoy and do it in a way that suits you because there are different options for different reasons and they suit different people. That's it. Thank you. That was lovely. Thank you, Josh.
Thank you to all of you for your presentations. It's great to hear the different um, things that are going on at those different institutions. And I think, you know, you, you already touched on the fact that they're all very different. You know, whether you go to a university or a college, there's something for everybody. I and mean, then some of the things on offer, you know, the flight simulation, the uh, the outdoor place that Common Lees from Abingdon and Whitney, um, all the technical stuff there that uh, Josh was just talking about, lots of different things to do. So it's well worth considering both um, universities and colleges because they really are offering very much the same sort of package. So thank you everybody for those presentations. Um, so we're now going to just ask attendees, please, if you would to answer one more poll for us, or one more poll at the moment. It's going to pop up on your screen in a moment about how you found these presentations. That's lovely, thank you. So we'll see the answer for this in a minute. I'm sure um, you will have got a lot out of today and I hope it has helped you to move on. It'd be interesting to see what the results are. Oh, I, I think actually, I think those results might have just been for us on, on the, uh, the organizer side of things, but uh, I certainly hope you did get some support and help from all those, those things, uh, presentations. And there are links, don't forget, when you um, do get copies of this presentation, there are links that you can follow up on. So I'm now gonna hand over to um, Lucy, who's going to go through our Q&A session with you. Thank you, Lucy. Thanks, Beth. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for those presentations, everyone. Apologies for the lag on the slides. For some reason, it wasn't transitioning the same time I was doing it, but we got there in the end. Um, so we did have some questions. Um, so this is quite a broad question. Um, one of our students asked, what are the entry requirements for these universities? Um, obviously, I appreciate entry requirements are different for different courses, but perhaps we could just go through your courses um, and the entry requirements that you were required to have your course uh, for your year of entry. Um, worth noting that entry requirements do change, um, but uh, if we start off with Amber. So, so my entry requirements were, I think, 112 UCAS points. Um, however, um, with a good personal statement, Oxford Brooks often do bring it down quite a bit. So my offer was 88 UCAS points, but it does vary for every person. It depends what area of nursing you want to go into as well. Yeah, I think personal statements are quite an important factor. Um, it's worth having a look at all these universities individually. Um, Lania, what was your entry requirements or rough area? Yeah, so I think mine were A, A, B or A, B, B. I can't specifically remember four years ago. But yeah, our personal statement and actually volunteering work is really, really important for our degree because they want to see that you are you want to learn, you are having experiences, different skills, different opportunities, so it's not all about entry requirements. Um, and also they look at each individual person on a case by case basis. Um, so yeah, definitely getting experience um, and a good personal statement is probably number one for us. Um, also worth mentioning that Lani, you did an integrated masters, and um, so I, I wonder have, if you yeah. get if your course um, slightly different entry requirements for a standard bachelor's. Um, so yeah, for my psychology kind of degrees, um, it's about ninety six UCAS points, but um, Box do try and uh, help to get you onto the courses, so they'll. Uh, lower the entry requirements or see what you've done and um, personal statement is really important um, and we also have like applicant days and open days obviously to go to the university and you can talk to everyone um, and getting to know them they will uh, find out what you want and therefore lower it a lot of the time. 
Yeah, definitely. There's other factors often, isn't there? Um, Lois, again, quite a different course. Um, I don't know if you can share what your entry requirements were. Yeah, so my entry requirements were slightly different. Um, so you don't particularly have to have uh, UCAS points or anything. You just have to have had sort of three A levels um, or equivalent. I think now they do take uh, BTEC equivalent. Um, and also from my course, because it was an apprenticeship, you have to have a supporting employer. So you can't enroll on the apprenticeship until you have an employer as well. So there's that element of it. Um, so yeah, three A levels and obviously an employer to support you in your job role. And finally, Josh, for your course, again, another different course. Uh, yeah, it's quite different. If I, I, I'm not entirely sure, to be completely honest, because I came in as a mature student so I'm not sure if the requirements are different or if I just had the A-levels before and they never really questioned it. Um, but I think for the college course, you just needed a certain number of A-levels. But I also know they offer the course at different levels. So if I didn't have those, I'm sure I could have gone in the year under the one I'm currently doing, I'm doing level four course, and I could have just gone into the level three course. Um, so it really depends on where you want to go in, at which stage uh, and what you have. But also for my um, university course that I went to, uh, briefly at Kiel, I think it was an A and two Bs in sciences and maths. Yeah, um, I think it it is quite a hard question to answer really because lots of courses offer different types, accept different types of qualifications. Um, on the handout documents, we do have um, introduction to all of the HEIs that are with us today, the universities and the colleges, um, and links to their website. So if you do have a course in mind or something specifically that you wanted to look up, then do follow up with the links to the website and you'll be able to find the exact um, entry requirements for those courses. But interesting to see the different perspectives of the different HEIs. Um, another question that's come through is, what is a typical day like in university um, or college and what do you enjoy most in your day? So again, we'll go back to Amber for that question. Um, so for me, obviously I'm first year, so I've literally had COVID. So in COVID, um, we've had, so a typical day would be um, a lecture at about 10 a.m., like 10 a.m. Um, and then we do pre-seminar work um, and then we'd have the seminar at like 1 p.m. for an hour um, and then just work on assignments but I think my favorite part of the course has been the practical elements and being able to actually go into university um, and getting ready for placement which is exciting. Yeah very exciting hopefully you'll be able to get out there soon. Um, I know how you feel with the uh, Covid situation I graduated during that time so it does create a slightly different environment on campus and um, Narnia what about your day today? how does that look like on your course? So each of our years is actually different because obviously my degree has been four years I'm in my final year so um, probably years one to three we've had about between 10 to 15 hours um, of lectures or seminars a week where on placement um, either once a week or twice a week and that either runs um, so the second week of each term, so the end of each term, we're on placement one day a week. Um, so that's something that's regular. Um, and then we also obviously have got lots of independent study to do in between that time. Um, we have preparation clinic as well, um, additionally. Um, and then in my fourth year, because I'm doing my dissertation, our contact hours or our lectures actually drop quite significantly because our dissertation is a whole module that we do independently. So I'm probably doing about four hours a week currently of lectures and seminars. Okay, that's great. So slightly different then compared to the other practical course. Juliet, what about your course? So pre-COVID times um, was my first and second year. And we had about three hours per module per week. So I had about four mod three to four modules per semester. Um, so it was about 12 hours on campus. And that was a one to two hour a lecture and then a one to two hour seminar. And then we're expected to do about three hours per hour that we're in contact time of independent research. Um, but that's optional on how much you want to get done. Um, now, COVID times, um, I have pre-recorded lectures and then I have uh, you know, online seminars. Um, and then because I'm doing my dissertation, 
I get about an hour to two hour contact time a week with my supervisor. Um, obviously that will stop soon due to handing it in, but it's been nice bit of contact. Yeah, so slightly different, obviously, with COVID time, but good to hear the perspective from your first and second year. Um, again, Lois, your course being quite different. Um, so how, how was your sort of day in uni, perhaps, or college and day at work, maybe? Yeah, so my days were, so we had a Friday at college. Um, so I'd work Monday through to Thursday, um, similar hours, 8.30 to 5. Um, and then I would be released one day a week for college which was still incorporated into my contract so it was still a full-time contract but um, contracted to that one day a week of college. Um, college was um, half past eight you could come in for uh, like a start up uh, maybe like a I've forgotten what we even called them now but they were just general sort of tutorials um, about things that we could go in and talk to uh, lecturers about um, and then we do nine till eleven would be one module, uh, 11 to 1 would be another, and then you'd have lunch, and then you'd do 2 till 4, and then 4 till half 4, again, would be a tutorial, but we didn't always have tutorials. Um, I know in third year we used them really heavily for our dissertations or our work based project, which is what I did. Um, so yeah, it's sort of, it's still structured sort of like a uni day and you still have lecturers, but it's more of a it's got more of a classroom feel about it. There's a lot less of you. Um, it's more interactive. Um, you seem to make a lot of uh, friends from it because you're all, you're all together for three years and there's only about, I'm feeling there was probably only about 20 of us. So it's a really small class. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the structure of the college day. Which, yeah, and that shows quite good contrast to uni life because obviously at uni it tends to be spread throughout the week, as the others were saying, but because you've only got that one day, more lectures happening in one day. Um, so a completely different structure for somebody that's enjoying the structure at the moment, perhaps that's something for you. Uh, Josh, I don't know if you can share some of the similar experiences from the others? Uh, yeah, pretty much, I'd say. Uh, so it's college, it's, it's usually blocked in um, three days, is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and my, my week, my college days. Um, and usually the morning is blocked off as, as like independent study time where we'd have we still have access to facilities like the computer labs or people would be in that we can ask questions if we need software that we can only access in college then uh, we can use that and then the rest of the time is you know uh, classes workshops lectures whatever um, I'd say college has felt more kind of hands-on uh, like classroom and I, I when I was at university you know I had maths lectures with huge lecture theatres of like 120 people in the class um so it's very different like my animation class for example specifically has a, like uh, six people in the actual workshops so pretty different yeah and that that raises some really good points that you guys can start thinking about when you're looking at the different unis um and when you're trying to narrow down your decisions of where you might want to go. Um, I wonder just uh, finally to ask all of you and um, perhaps how you came to that final decision to actually go into higher education, why you decided higher education in what, whichever progression pathway, um, sort of your final thoughts and why why you decided that was good for you. Um, Amber? Yeah, so the main reason for me is um, I was, after my degree, I am going to join the military. Um, and I didn't really want to be a medic, um, I wanted to be a nurse, um, and I just feel like the qualifications that I'm going to, I can get qualifications in the military, but I feel like qualifications out of the military are going to be really helpful because there's a lot of things that the university help us to do, like um, volunteering with the Red Cross um, and student ambassador roles, I think which are going to really help me with my confidence, um, because being an officer, you have to public speak all the time, um, so I thought it was a very good decision and I really um, wanted to move away from home to be completely honest <laughs> because I'm 21 and I didn't really want to live with my parents all the time so it was a good compromise because I can just come home whenever I want to get my parents to do my laundry so it's all good. <laughs> Fair enough, sounds like a good choice. Uh, Lania, how do you feel about your progression pathway into higher education? 
Yeah, so my pathway has been a bit unique, really. Um, I actually left school at 14. Um, I didn't do my GCSEs. I didn't do my A-levels. Um, I had an injury. Um, and then I decided to go to the Open University to get, um, I did like foundation year, and then I managed to get a degree with the Open University. Um, and then I went into work um, for a little while. And then I knew I always wanted to work in healthcare. So I worked at a hospital and admin, but really wanted to be on the medical side. Um, so I knew that I like I'd seen family members have speech and language therapy input before and I knew that it was a more flexible job you can actually work part time and you can actually climb up the career path quite um quite well and they they're very supported with you so you don't just leave university in a job and that's it like you have to have more competencies that you pass so it's a much more um kind of guided more nurturing career path for me and doing speech and language therapy you have to go to university it's quite a um complex um and quite a intense course so university is the only pathway but it's like the best career ever i love placements i love seeing clients i want to specifically work with um adults that have had neuro neurological disorders or um traumatic brain injuries but also speech and language therapists, we can work all the way with newborn babies all the way up until the end of life. So huge range of opportunities, huge range of placements, and we can work with so many different people. So it's really, really rewarding. That's great. Again, combined quite a lot of key factors in there. Um, you know, you can study at any time if you decide, but particularly now we're finding that students want to come back in a few years time. And that's absolutely fine, particularly if you find a career that you're passionate about, perhaps go and test a field by doing the apprenticeship first and come back to a degree later. Um, Juliet, what about your progression pathway? I know you're just about to finish yours. Yeah, so I never even wanted to do A-levels. I didn't want to go to university. So to think I'm finishing it soon is slightly strange. Um, my parents always wanted me to go to university. So I made an agreement with them that I would do a course that I found interesting. Um, and I'm lucky that I found the course that I did. Um, at the university I did, um, so I do chronological psychology and it's been really good fun um, and it's one of those courses where I would say like if you don't know what you want to do it's quite fun to do um, but sidetracking, so um, it's been a really good time doing it and so I would yeah because I want to go into um, teaching English out in Asia so I'm also doing a TEFL qualification but alongside that I want to do psychology research and that's been something Box has been amazing at teaching me over the past three years is how to conduct uh, psychology research um, interviews and questionnaires um, and it's been really helpful so I know in the future I'm prepared to do what I want to do so yeah that's great lots of opportunities available and and great that you found a career path. I was the same, didn't want to do a levels, didn't want to go to university. And it is the cliche, best three years of your life, I have to say, um, or at college, same thing. Um, Lois, again, quite a, a different course that you did. Um, perhaps some of the reasons why you chose that and how it's worked out for you now that you've finished. Yeah, I'd say my progression to the course that I did was also very um, different. Um, I did GCSEs, I did A-levels, um, I applied to go to normal university um, and I, be open and honest, because uh, it happens, my A-levels didn't go to plan, um, I didn't get the grades that I needed and, you know, I'd be open and honest about that because it does happen sometimes and, um, you know, I think part of it is like some of the others said I didn't want to do A-levels I really didn't like A-levels um, so that was probably part of the reason but I managed to uh, take a gap year which also didn't go down well um, and sort of readjust and figure out what I actually wanted to do so I carried on with the university course I actually went to Nottingham Trent um, and I lasted there three months and I turned around to my parents and said, I'm really sorry, but I don't want to do this. Um, I don't like it. It's not for me. It's not the course for me. It's not right. So I left, um, took it upon myself to get a job um, with uh, someone that I knew. And uh, within, I started in the February and within 
sort of seven months, we were preparing to start me on the apprenticeship. So we got in touch with Avignon and Whitney and um, Oxford Brooks as well. And I enrolled on the apprenticeship and I sort of kicked myself for not doing it any sooner because it was a really good pathway. And I have really enjoyed the last three years and uh, four. Um, the apprenticeship has given me uh, you know, not just the degree, but you also do the accreditation part of it. So I'm also, um, which I got my results back a month ago. Um, I'm also accredited to the CMI as well. So you get you get a degree and you get an accreditation at the same time. Um, so that's really, really been worthwhile and sort of business wise and where I want to go in the future. Um, it's really, really helped. So yeah, definitely not the normal way to go, but it, worked out in the end it always works out in the end yeah and thank you for sharing your experiences i'm sure lots of students can relate even some of us sat here i think we've got a few mature students with us some of us still in their first year some of us just finishing um but all knowing where we want to get to now and i think higher education is a place that supports you doing that josh another example somebody that uh, altered your progression pathway and um, how are you finding your new pathway now yeah, exactly. Again, pr pretty similar to that is uh, I, I kind of found it in a roundabout way, you know, I've tried university and it just wasn't for me. It wasn't, it didn't suit me and uh, it doesn't suit everyone. Uh, so you really just need to find what's good for you. And I'm now doing something that I'm actually interested in, something I want to progress in, in a career way. Um, and this will help me do that, which I'm not even sure university was, was going for me because I didn't get the right course for me. and. Uh, the way it was done what wasn't for me thank you well thank you all for sharing your experiences i hope that's helped build on those presentations and um, our attendees can gain something from that um, and as i say you can follow up with any of the HEIs with the um, handout and hopefully this given you a good insight into all the different progression pathways and um, so thank you guys for answering those questions i'm gonna hand back to beth now Lovely. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you for doing those Q&As. I mean, really interesting, again, all the information that's coming out of the presentations tonight and the, the variety of routes that uh, that you've all taken as student ambassadors. I hope um, our attendees have, have picked that up tonight, that, you know, it's not just a question of leaving school and going to college or university. There are lots of different ways. And, and even if you do decide that the first way you're chosen isn't quite right for you, doesn't stop you from picking things up and starting again. Um, just whilst we're sharing a bit of personal information, I myself didn't do university from school, um, but actually went on to university when I was in my 40s and graduated back in 2016. So mature students is not a bad thing either. So there's lo lots out there. So thank you um, to everybody for presenting. Thank you to our attendees for joining us today. Um, we hope you enjoyed this first event in the series and managed to make lots of notes on, on the things that were coming out of the session. Um, as we mentioned earlier, there are the links in the presentation documents as well. So we hope you can find lots of useful things there. Um, we're now going to have another quick poll question, which is gonna pop up just about how you found this event to help us as well as, as I said it's the first event of three and that's on your screens now. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for answering those polls for us. Um, just, <coughs> excuse me. Oh dear, right at the end there. <coughs> um, thank you again, as I say, for joining us. We have got two more events lined up in this series. The next one is on Monday, the 19th of April, same time, seven till, uh, sorry, seven, five till six. Um, and that's on student life, uh, when we'll be hearing again about uh, how life carries on day to day for the students. And the final one, the third one is on Monday, the 17th of May, um, and that uh, will uh, follow up there. Sorry, I got the title of that first one wrong. The first one is on choosing a course, that's how to get the right course for you. And the second one will be on student life. So I do apologise for that. 
The recording for today's event will be um, available and a short survey. And we'd like uh, to ask you to fill that in for us if you would. It just helps us to keep improving these sessions for you. Um, and again, say thank you for joining us. And we hope that you'll all join us at the next sessions.